that's right this is my first zero turn mower that I've ever owned and like everything else I get it doesn't run <laughs> but you can let me know if you think I got this for a good price I got this for five hundred dollars that might be the most I've ever spent on a piece of equipment to work on a couple years ago I bought a John Deere 2 something 218 I forget what it was but that was that was 400 and it came with some attachments and things but I'm trying to crack into the zero turn market but I might keep this for myself depends on how this goes but this is a Cub Cadet RZT it's a 54 inch and it's got the twin Kohler Courage uh, I think it's just 20 this is 24 horsepower a little hard to read there so what's the story with this one well, let me tell you so it doesn't run and the deck <laughs> the deck height adjuster someone added a bolt and a nut because this doesn't doesn't slot into any of those heights but uh yeah the deck is somewhat level for now yeah, like I said, it doesn't run, and that's the main thing. So it's supposed to have working hydros, working transmissions. Uh, the guy who I bought it from bought it as a project and never really did anything with it. So he said he was able to get the engine to turn over. Uh, it does have a battery with it, but nothing's hooked up. So I haven't heard this thing turn over. Supposedly it does. And... That's about all I know. It's got mixed match tires. It's got kind of a knobby tread on that one and then more of like a turf saver on this one. So I would like to get matching turf savers on this. Well, yeah, I haven't tried anything out. So what I'd like to do with this, we'll see how far I get with it, but what I'd like to do with this is obviously get it running, get it moving, get it mowing. Um, it'd be nice to get a new seat for this. It's got a pretty decent sized mouse hole in it. Oh, and there. There too. <laughs> and some cracks. So the seat needs to be, needs to get a cover or a replacement seat. And uh, these are all sun faded plastics. It'd be cool to see those get restored, maybe with a torch or maybe with paint. Obviously, get the engine running, like I said, clean all this up. Um, it looks like the deck was painted once before. Maybe do some painting. The Cub Cadet yellow isn't too hard to find. And uh, I think this thing would look pretty sweet. Alright. Let's get it running. Alright, first thing we'll do is we'll test out this battery. Just want to see if we have anything on it. Uh, 8.39, 8.4. So that's good, it could be a savable battery. It is marked uh, March of 2019, so that's not real great. But at least we might be able to charge it. Oil is good. Looks a little dark, but it's at the perfect level. reading 911 hours and we're seeing a parking brake light come on where would that be there we go well, that's kind of promising
might not be getting spark but I'm seeing some fuel start to enter into the really brand new looking fuel filter so that's good the pump might be working well you want to see something interesting look at that little teeth marks <laughs> so that's I mean honestly that's kind of a good sign if we just had a coil wire that's been eaten through that's not that bad oh I'm seeing some uh, some like acorns right there where the spark plug is let's check the other side oh I can't even get to that's been like messed with all right, we're gonna have to take this cover off. I can't get to this other spark plug. So yeah, let's work at getting the cover off. I'm sure there's a big nest in there and looks like we have at least one coil that's dead. And we'll see what we can do. Just pushed it over to my shed so I can work on it more easily, but look at this. This is how you know someone's been in here before, right? <laughs> Not bolted down at all. Making it easy for me though. All right, so there's our, I'll get you closer. There's the coil wire that got eaten. Here's the other one, it's intact. And uh, I'd like to pop that spark plug off and just see, you know, if we're getting spark on one cylinder, that'd be nice. And I can check to see if I have a Kohler coil, I might. tighten that down so bad that is absolutely seized in there just bending just bending the uh, pry bar that I have on there okay well, I'll see if I can get a, a real socket on there okay I got a real socket on there this time there we go Should have done that the first time. There we go. RC12 YC. All right, we got the jumper hooked back up. You're looking right here. Here's your spark plug. I'm gonna turn over the engine, see if we can see some spark. Yeah, I can see it immediately. We have pretty good spark. I'll do it one more time just in case you missed it. Yep. Try it again for you. Yes, pretty good spark on that cylinder. So we uh, might be able to get this thing to fire on one cylinder. You'll probably start hearing my kids bang away on the drums. <laughs> but if you've watched my videos, even like one or two of them, you realize I'm not really Kyle by the creek, I'm Kyle by the highway. That's what you hear most of the time. <laughs> but, you know, so I'm not one of those channels that's going to have, like, pristine audio. Sorry. And I really, actually, I really don't care. It is what it is. All right, let's look for a replacement coil. I feel like a lot of channels don't show all their parts like their spare parts here's here's what I'm working with here so you'll see like I have masking tape all around these it's just to hold in the screws the bolts because I don't want to lose them so I just masking tape so that's like 20 Briggs and Stratton <clears throat> some of them are other brands but basically so like 20 Briggs coils and then I have these <laughs> this is all I really have for Kohler so here's the original one the one with the mouse chewed I have a brand new one and I wrote on it new Kohler command 17 horsepower and that actually looks pretty good but I think I have a winner here this one besides the the kill wire being on that side let's see I'll show you this way 
How's that look? Just about identical. So let's throw this thing on. I cleaned it up a little with the wire brush. Boy, this ground wire got chewed into. Have it in the most rear position just to see how this does when the magnet goes by. Yeah, I could definitely scooch it up some. Now I'll get the business card. Yeah, I'll get something. I don't have a business card actually. I'll rig something up. All right, so I have a little uh, painter's tape just doubled over so it's not sticky. And that will serve as my business card. All right. There we go. Great. All right, let's give this another try. Let's check this coil I just put on. We'll see if it has spark. Yeah, hard for you to see. Oh yeah, we have spark. You even shocked me a little. A little date code on it, 423.21. Well, I uh, put the spark plug in. Both spark plugs are in. We have spark on both coils, on both cylinders. I put a little bit more uh, starting fluid right through the intake and got the jumper pack on. We're gonna see if this thing will fire off. Seems like it's losing fuel. Carb is probably really dirty, but it does mow. That's awesome. Well, it's the next day and I had the battery charging overnight. So that helped out a little bit. It didn't start easily. I needed some carb spray. And here are the things I think that are wrong with it. I think it has a dirty carburetor. I don't know if you could hear it popping, snapping. You know, it's trying to idle. The idle is really high. Um, and it doesn't really run great. So the the RPM sort of take off a bit when it's not under load and when it is under load, it's bogging. So that could also be like governor adjustment stuff, but um, I think someone might have rigged up the throttle a bit so that it's running at higher RPM. 
I don't know, there's a couple things going on here that I'm not sure about. But I think what we're gonna do first is get that carb cleaned. I mean, why not, right? So let's take the carb off. Let's clean that up. Uh, we can at least eliminate a dead battery from the issue because I thought yesterday, you know, I just had my jump pack on and it seemed to die every now and then. And I thought maybe it was just losing power to the, the fuel shutoff solenoid, you know, things like that. But usually it doesn't run really well when you're just running off a battery pack. So I got a battery on there that, um, and this thing does charge the battery while it's running. I tested that. You know, so those things I think I can rule out. So let's start with fuel in the carb, and then, you know, we'll talk about linkages and governors and st stuff like that later. Just starting to get the air box cover off, and we have a collapsed vacuum line here. I've actually never seen one quite like that. So it runs to there. All right, we'll see what's going on with that, but that could be some sort of issue. I really need some room here to work. But maybe we can work on this carburetor on this stool. So I put it down on the stool and a bunch of fuel came out. And I think one thing is becoming very clear about this fuel is it is gross. It's not the oldest fuel ever, but stinks a bit and it's probably not going to run this machine very well got the file down wrenches here got a 13 millimeter and a 12 looks like it's the 13 that fits this one sometimes you have to file them down so that you can get them to fit Not bad at all. Okay, we're looking pretty nice in here. Not sure why there's a... A threaded, like a regular screw, like a wood screw. That's pretty strange. That's a bad sign. Should be able to get this main jet out. And that's the one I'm mostly worried about since it bogs down. This is a Briggs and Stratton screwdriver. I wonder if it fits in there. Yeah, it does. The bigger one does. This is the 19062. Gotta love when it comes out easily. That is good stuff. It's definitely not clogged, but... doesn't want to stay in all right I got some torch tip cleaners and I'll run through all the holes of the jets and make sure everything's clean needle looks good that right back in. This carb was not that bad at all, so that's kind of making me worried because, you know, there's there's other things it could be. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna look into the the screw here. I don't know if you can see that well, but it looks like part of this carb broke, and then they put that in as like a stop. 
but it looks like the throttle doesn't go open all the way now. I don't know. I'm going to back that screw out and just see what that's all about. Obviously someone did it for a reason, but what's going on here? So yeah, it's like a fine thread or a machine screw. Okay, so that I don't really understand. That's that's wide open without any screw in there. Am I wrong to think that's how it should be? Shouldn't it go to wide open? That's choke. Yeah, that's choke. I don't know. I'm going to try it without it. The carb is put back together. I rigged up something kind of temporary for that vacuum line that was pinched. So let's see what happens here. Initially, it seemed to run a little better. Uh, it idles a little bit better, but it's still popping. Put a back tire. So it could need a valve adjustment. But yeah, it bogs down when you engage the blades. I mean, it's still somewhat usable, but it's really not ideal. the next day and I started working before taking you guys along and filming the process kind of like the days before YouTube <laughs> where you just work without a camera but anyway uh, I'm sure some of you are thinking you know make a governor adjustment if it's if it's bogging down at full throttle you know something seems like maybe the governor's off I've messed around with a few of these springs with the linkages and things like that but nothing made a big difference but I just crack this 10 millimeter nut loose and the governor arm swung so it moved like I, I do think it was probably set up incorrectly so um, what you're supposed to do on these is 
move the governor uh, counterclockwise, which it's now all the way counterclockwise, and then the control arm needs to be pinned to my right, and I have the throttle at full throttle on the top of the machine. So this is ready to be tightened down, and it does seem like it was an adjustment. So sometimes, you know, you go to mess with governors and everything is set up right, and you kind of just undo it and do it again, but this one actually seemed like we, uh, we made a, a slight adjustment. I, I would use my ratchet side, but it's stripped out. It's not working. So I need to get a new 10 millimeter wrench. I do like those close-end uh, ratchets. Pretty handy. It's a little tight to get a socket down in there, so stuck doing it the hard way like this. All right, that's tightened back up. Doesn't like to start. Not a good sign. I know you're probably worried about compression. I am too, I'll get to it. just ran it for a bit it's a mowing it's definitely better than yesterday so that governor adjustment you know makes me think we're on the right track here uh, I didn't have much gas in the tank and I actually ran out of gas it just dumped all that I have at, at my house just that much I'm so I need to go to the gas station to fill up my gas cans yeah I think that was good Something was done correctly here, so moving in the right direction. And I think what's next is check compression and then do a valve adjustment and have a fuller gas tank. And we could test this thing a little bit better. So yeah, what's it doing? Because I didn't take you along for the ride. Well, it it's running at a higher RPM with a load on. So that's better. So I was actually able to mow some grass a little bit more consistently until I ran out of gas. <laughs> but it's still not right so it's better but you would definitely ride it and use it and you'd be like hmm what's wrong with this thing seems like the engine's tired so yeah i know we're gonna have to check valves and compression so we'll get to that All right, here's another thing i just figured out i i popped out the spark plugs okay what do you have This one's this right out had like a little speaker thing. This is and what he brought out. <laughs> what is it? It had like a like a mini one of the of the big thing that had her name in it. Oh yeah, like the the sparkle shaker thing. Yeah. Yeah. And we emptied it uh -huh. out, yeah. and then. And then I filled it up with some water down there. Yeah, some yuck water, all right. Then, it's like a yuck shaker. And then I put some dirt in it <laughs> from over there. Uh-huh. Then it just turns like this. Cool. I just popped out the spark plugs and noticed that, you know, they weren't really that warm. And touching this muffler, you know, I had run this machine not very long, just maybe four or five minutes. But this is cold and this one is not even that hot but it's it's hot you know um this one's cold so uh, this cylinder was not firing now this was the one 
this is the side that had spark from the beginning. I wonder if it lost spark. I do need to check if that piston is going up and down on this side. So I think I was just running on one cylinder right then. And it, you know, it did a pretty good job with one cylinder. So if we get this thing running on two cylinders, I might have this figured out. All right, buddy, you do it. Is that normal? One hundred and seventy-five. Wow. Okay, so it has compression, a whole bunch of it. Right, well, both cylinders have the same amount of compression. That's a very good sign. Yeah, look what I had in the shop. I have replacement spark plugs for this. These are the Stens parts that replace the Champion RC12YCs. So let's get those installed. I have the spark plugs installed, just putting the boot on this last one here on, the, on my right side. And I checked both coils again and they both have good spark. I don't know, let's see what happens here. bad at. Starter looks like it got bound up. Almost like it got bent. Oh, that's weird. Let's try that again. Look at that. Ooh. What's going on here? A start a starter just break? Huh. You ever seen that? Like it. Oh wow. Spark coming out. Got loose there. Okay. Uh just when we were on to something. I think I actually have another starter, <laughs> believe it or not. So let's see if we can get that off. You know, I have to say, I know this thing isn't running <laughs> right or working right, but this thing's a pleasure to work on. Like Kohler, I know these engines aren't great and they have their vibration issues and they crack and they do all sorts of things. They're so easy to work on though. Like if anyone's worked on those uh, twin cylinder Briggs that are similar to this one, the carburetor on that thing is so complicated, so hard to get on and off, hard to clean it. You know, this is all about as easy as pie. Well, there's a brand new, brand new looking starter, bent, bent as anything. You know what I think was going on there? What you need on these is a washer or two. Um, the Bendex gets too close to the gears on the flywheel and it binds itself up and I think that's sort of what was going on here. I don't know if you could tell how bent that is. That's like destroyed. Let's test it on the bench though, see what it does. Whoa. <laughs> Let me give you a better angle. Check this out. That is all sorts of bent. All right, let's see if I have a replacement for this. Here are my options. I thought this was gonna be the replacement here. Um, I actually found this by a dumpster, but at the time it looked brand new. I think someone threw out a new part that they had never used, because that does test. Um, here's the original one here with the bent part. And, well, so for, this is not gonna work, because these are too wide. So that's not gonna work, unfortunately. Here's a Kohler Command starter and uh i think that's gonna bolt right up obviously different size it's probably not as strong let's see what it does though well this starter is not cutting it i'll show you just seems like it can't overcome the compression you know and the compression is not that bad 
I gotta look into why. Well, maybe it is pretty tough. 175, does that sound right? I'm gonna take a look at my compression gauge. That's one I got out of at a garage sale, so. It feels okay. But yeah, I bet this starter just can't handle. Obviously, it's not the right size starter, so it just doesn't seem like it can handle it. But this might pause us right here. I mean, I'm going to have to order a part. Man, I felt like we were onto something. Yeah, the white is uh, pounds per square inch. So that's what we were getting for a reading. I love Facebook Marketplace. I bought this engine just today for $80. It's supposed to run great, but it doesn't have a carburetor or any of the airbox stuff, but it's a, I think a 25 horsepower. And he said, I just put a brand new starter on it. He was gonna use it for a mudding mower and then uh, something happened to the machine. Something happened to the frame of the mower. So he didn't end up using this engine. He wanted 170 for it. I got him down to 80. All right, let's take that starter off and install it. And, you know, worse comes to worse. I think we got a really nice, I mean, this thing looks clean, you know? So this engine might eventually go on there anyhow, but we got to see what we got with the engine that's on there now. Let's get the starter off. Okay, let's try this again. Have the new starter installed. Looks like it fits great. I had the battery charging again. And, you know, like like where we left off, you know, we're trying to see if we have spark and, and both cylinders, and we're trying to see if both cylinders are firing. So this one wasn't before. <laughs> sign starter sounds good all right let's give it a little bit of help because remember it kind of ran out of gas Yeah, it's running off of one cylinder. This one isn't firing. Really odd. Because it has compression and it has spark. <laughs> huh. I mean, I might have to crack into the valves there. Man, I bet this engine's going to run great if we can get two cylinders here. It's running pretty good on one. Well, I robbed the coils from that engine I just picked up and put those two coils on. I really just want to eliminate any idea that there's something wrong with that coil, even though I'm getting spark from it when I test it, but... All right, let's give this a try. That cylinder just won't fire. Uh, that doesn't make much sense to me. I, I mean, it, it has to be valves, right? We got to get into the valves. But so it has compression, but it's not firing. Does that normally happen? <laughs> All right, let's crack that valve cover open. See where that one landed? I didn't. Okay. 
good and messy. I can see the problem already. We got a, we got just toast push rods and everything. Oh gosh. Wow. All right. Okay, where did that other valve cover bolt go? All right, I found the bolt. Okay, let's take a look what we have here. It, there, this, uh, this whole thing is really jacked up. Okay, there's a push rod. This one's not even moving. So let's uh let's get this one out. This is the intake. The intake is all bent up. You can see that. Now sometimes you can bend those back into shape. We'll see how it goes. So here are the push rods. Here's our intake. That's quite a good bend. And the exhaust is perfect. So you know, I could rob my parts machine in my parts engine, which I'm really glad that I got one, but uh, I think we could bend this back into shape. Yeah, I'll do a little hammer work on this. Ooh, it's a little crooked right to left too, okay. Yeah. Um, actually, I'm gonna look in my stockpile too, because I might have that push rod as well. So this is what I had in the stockpile. This one looks really close, but it's a little thinner, I think, but it's bent too. Um, and these two, they look the same as the exhaust valve, uh, the exhaust push rod. But what's the rule on this? Like, can you use an exhaust push rod on an intake? Because these are different, right? I don't, I don't know. Is this like this is aluminum, and this is steel? Does it have to be that way? I don't know. I guess I should try to bend the original one into position. Let's see if I can do that first. I got it somewhat straightened out. I think it's okay. <laughs> we'll find out, right? Okay, this exhaust rocker arm, the bolt that holds it all together, um, was unthreading. So that's this is supposed to be threaded into the engine and you're supposed to be able to take this nut off um, but it wasn't allowing that to happen this is like seized on there so it unthreaded the bolt so we got to figure this out let's see if we can get these to come apart here hmm. yeah I'm gonna loosen that some more make sure we're getting that right got the t25 on there so yeah that might have been part of the problem that was still oh you know what I had never broken that loose because the push rod was just off so all right let's how do we want to do this let's thread that into the engine first and we'll go from there I haven't adjusted the valves yet I just set everything on there I just wanted to make sure that I'm getting movement go so we got everything hooked up correctly so I'm gonna take some time I'll figure out the, uh, the valve clearances on this and uh, we'll get this put back together I probably shouldn't but I have a pretty good feeling about this we're all put back together let's see if it fires on two cylinders It does. There you go. You can see that has not run in a while. Look at the smoke coming off of that one. Engine sounds great. All right. 
I'm gonna put the uh, GoPro on my uh, chest carrier and uh, we'll go zip around and see if this thing mows. Still didn't like to start. I want to try to run it with the air filter on. So once I get it going, I might do some mowing. Well, it died there on the hill. Seems like it's not getting fuel or enough fuel. Hm. Oh, found the problem. That came undone. All right, that should help. All right, we'll get some more carb spray. but I swapped out the fuel pump from the parts engine and put it on this one because it just seemed to have trouble pumping enough fuel but since I did that it's running nice and smooth the trick will be will it restart because it doesn't seem to like to start it always needed you know starting fluid so we'll see that for a test. Boy, this thing is fun. It does not like to restart though. <laughs> so, I might think about a new carburetor for this. Or I could try cleaning it again. But it stayed running perfectly through this whole mow. Put everything up in there all up in there and then down by the creek all the motorcycles are out today it is a beautiful saturday here in connecticut my leaves are almost all down 
But these maples seem to drop them real quick. Not everybody else's is. But I get a lot of shade here. We have like a little mountain over there. Lose about an hour and a half of sunlight. But yeah, what a nice day. I'm pretty excited about this thing. So definitely number one on my list is getting a turf saver here. It's tearing up the lawn pretty bad. I think I'm going to spring for a really nice seat, like a brand new Cub Cadet seat. I think that's what I'm going to do. And I might just go right and buy a replacement card for this too, because I bet that will solve the problem. Then we're going to mess with the height adjustment, and I think it's just this arm that you use to set the height. I think it's just jacked up a bit, it's bent. But uh, the height they have it at, you know, the previous owner set it there. It's actually a really good height. I mean, wouldn't totally mind just leaving it there. Oh, look at that. This is supposed to have a roller in the front. It'd be nice to get that. I bet I could rig something up. That'd be nice to have that roller. I think I might have figured out why it's not starting up. It's not actually getting to choke. So when you put this up all the way, it's not actually engaging the choke lever. So maybe this doesn't need a new carb. You know, I'll just, another day I'll, I'll look in there and see what's going on, why. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, see that's supposed to, oh yeah, see that's supposed to go all the way up. Wow, we're leaking pretty bad something. Leaking some oil. I'd like to know where that's coming from. Let's see it right there, right on, right on that spring. Something, hopefully it's a valve cover. might be that governor seal it doesn't look terrible but if I'm gonna keep this machine I can deal with stuff like that definitely not something you want to sell all right next time I work on this we'll adjust that choke so we actually get choke I bet the thing will fire right up then some time has passed maybe a week and a half it frost on the ground right now This zero turn is not a high priority project for me right now. It's turning into winter and I'm pretty much done mowing my lawn and even doing my leaves. So I'm gonna you know, work on this when I can. What I'm doing today is I'm gonna try to get that choke linkage hooked up correctly. And then I think I found some tires in my stash to change out that tire. So it'll be great if I can get those two things done. So let me show you one of the complications with this choke linkage or this really this is the throttle cable right here and these mufflers are not OEM obviously you know who knows this whole engine might not be the original engine but someone put these mufflers on this muffler is in the way of this T25 bolt and uh, it's very hard to get to that so here's what you have to do get the T25 and then you could put a quarter inch wrench on there or even put the closed end ratchet wrench in there I'm gonna loosen it that way and then I'm just gonna make an adjustment on this like position this cable slightly different so that it actually pulls up on this linkage when you go to pass full throttle and that would engage the choke so right now that's not happening but we're gonna make it happen and then the other news is it doesn't look like it's leaking any oil when it sits so that's a good sign it might leak a little drop or two while it runs I'll have to keep my eye on that but uh, things are looking in the same you know it's dirty in here I got to really clean this up but nothing looks like it's sopping wet with oil so that's a good sign pretty cold out it's been cold for a number of days so this battery isn't holding up great but I got the jumper on here and I did just start it 
It works. So you put this all the way up the choke. And this is actually a really great test because it's nice and cold. So this is a real cold start here and no starting fluid. So that's what we wanted to do. So there's nothing wrong with that carb. Might need a better battery. Uh, but let's start working on that, getting the wheel off. And we'll see if I can get these. Um, I have matching tires, by the way. So even though this is good, uh, I have two that will match. And we'll see if I can get the tires off and then the new one's on by myself if not i'll just go to the tire store i like to visit every now and then and uh, they help me out pretty good as i was kneeling down to take this wheel off i was hearing the sound Sounds like a buzzer. I thought it was coming from the engine or... That's the air leak. There, it's right there. <laughs> it's, a, it's making like a high pitched buzz. Anyway, they found the air leak. But uh, let's see if we can get the tire off the rim here. And we're off to the tire store. You know, I tried for a couple minutes to break the bead with a sledgehammer, but I really need a tire removal tool or like you know that whole setup Harbor Freight has that but I don't own that yet so it's fine with me we'll go to the store we'll have them do it I'll mount these new tires uh, these are used yeah, I picked these up you know not too long ago from a like a $60 tractor that I bought and it came with three sets of tires and these are the right size they're not maybe the most ideal tread but I believe they'll be a lot better than that tread on the lawn. Probably not as good as these. These are these are the the Carlisle, uh, the real turf saver ones. These are good, but I don't have a matching set of those, so we'll go with this. I think I'll be okay. Drop the tires off the tire store. They're pretty swamped right now, so those won't be ready. You know, right now. Maybe today. Maybe later. But anyway. Um, I'm going to take off, I, I unbolted this, and uh, I want to take off the fender. I was going to do the torch trick on this, and then, you know, as I'm thinking about it, this is a gas tank. <laughs> it's a gas tank under here. I really shouldn't do a flame near that. So, I'm going to take off these fenders. I got this all loosened up, and if seeing a dead mouse concerns you, then look away, because we have a dead critter under here. Sorry, little guy. He's been dead a long time, though. Another one in there. So, good thing we have this off. We'll get this cleaned up. And then uh, we'll try the torch trick on this, see if these plastics come back to life. We have both fenders off right now. Got the torch right here. See how this looks. Pretty good trick, isn't it? This will take a little bit of time, but you can see the extreme difference. 
So give me a minute and I'll get all this complete. This one's done, so here's the difference. All faded. Not completely uniform, but a lot better. Well, I know it doesn't look like much sitting up here on blocks, but here's how it came out. A little splotchy. It's not a professional job. But again, this is going to be a keeper for me. So this is just my mower right now. So good enough for me. Cleaned up the tank just a little bit, just there where you can see the fuel level. And uh, cleaned up the engine cover too. Got it bolted down. This thing was missing so many bolts that hold all these plastics. You know, someone was in here working on all this stuff. Uh, it did not return a lot of the bolts they took out, but everything is secure now. You know, you could lift up on all those plastics. Now it's all good. So, what's next with this thing? Obviously the, the tires, whenever those are done. I purchased a Cub Cadet. It's like a aftermarket, I don't even know what you call this. It's an aftermarket Cub Cadet seat. You know, second generation, or I don't know what you call it. But it says Cub Cadet on it. It's about half the price of you know an OEM Cub Cadet seat, which are like $350, by the way. This was 150 bucks, which is way too much for a seat, but I went for it. So that's coming in. It might be here tomorrow. Um, I do have ca two cans of yellow Cub Cadet paint and still going back and forth whether or not I'm gonna use it on this mower. I did get uh, two foot tread things to put down here, which would be pretty nice. And I did get the roller for the front the deck here and I have to bend this bracket it's bent bend that back into place and maybe I'll do that right now I got that roller and I did get a bolt for it so yeah maybe I'll bend this back and see if we can't fix that part and I noticed this while I was down here and maybe you guys can tell me what this is all about I get this cable like an engagement cable and it and this was like tucked up someone had put it you know hit it out of the way this is the um the trans here and that spins with you know the wheels if you go to the other side it's hooked up to a bracket that keeps the gear from spinning so you can see here this is what it looks on, like on this side so to me it looks like this piece is missing Or maybe it's only supposed to have it on one side, depending on the model. So I don't know if anyone knows about that. I mean, this doesn't look like too hard of a part to buy. But it's definitely missing something. A spring and a little, I think it's a spring. Spring and then this part. A couple days later, it's like 10 minutes to 5 p.m. So probably looks like midnight. I took the deck off this a couple days ago. Uh, I'm gonna refurbish that and paint this thing up. But uh, I got the tires back from the store. They have tubes in them, they both match. So before it gets too dark, let's put these on. we go matching tires they look pretty good I think they're gonna work fine 
So yeah, I decided to go this far with it, stripped it down, took off, you know, the spindles and things like that, and we ground it down a bit, degreased it, wrapped these rollers, and uh, we're going to go to town with some Cub Cadet Yellow here and get this thing painted up. Mm -hmm. Looking pretty good, huh? And, uh, the kids are helping me out. We got this all taped off here. I'm getting this part. Yeah, good work. I'm getting this. Really good work. Nice. Okay. We'll be painting this, even though it's cold. Okay. Even though it's cold. <laughs> we'll get it done. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it done. There we go. I am glad I restored this. How good does that look? Painted the spindles too. Painted the grass deflector. Got everything taped off pretty good, so it's not not too bad with overspray on the mowing deck. A little bit more overspray on the zero turn itself. That's because I had a few young helpers, but that's okay. Again, this is a keeper for me, I think, so I'm not too worried about that. But all right, check it out. There's the seat I bought. Thing looks pretty sharp, huh? Pretty standard setup in the back. All right, let's get this deck mounted and uh, then we'll start talking about getting the seat on. But let me show you the, the zero turn here. Back end came out real nice. A little bit of sun glare here but hopefully you can see came out pretty good and um i have not messed with this yet so i know that was definitely on my checklist to try to figure this out but i did briefly look at it and i can't quite figure out why that's not engaging in the height hooks there but yeah so gotta try to figure that out too okay so i think i sort of figured out what's going on with this has more to do with the plate so the the plate that this arm notches into is pushed too much that direction I don't know if there's a way you can see this but there's some there's some bolts that hold this on and if I come this direction there you kind of see it back here see all this gap um, yeah so there's it's hard to tell there's a gap you could see the yellow paint in there where my finger is I don't think it's supposed to be like that. I think this plate is supposed to come this way. And that would allow this to catch because nothing really looks broken on this arm. I think the arm is correct. It's not twisted like I first thought. It's this height notched plate. So I'm going to mess with the bolts that hold that on and see if I can get it to come this way a little bit. Let's see what I can do. All right, got the got the plate loose here. I just unbolted it completely. So it was bolted up uh, too high, so it's going to be impossible for you to see, but see there's two holes here. Uh, it needs to be, it needs to be like that. You can kind of see that I'm lined up now. There's a, a hole through this bracket and then you can see where the bolt would go in. I think you can see that. Before it was like this. And then there was no bolt hole for the top one, so the previous owner had something rigged up in the middle. I think they just had it too high. So hopefully none of these holes are stri stripped out, um, but I'm gonna put that back together correctly now. Yeah, that's much better. You can see no gap here. And that would that would notch in no problem. You need, you need downward pressure from the, the weight of the deck to hold it in. It, you know, with no downward pressure, the spring just wants to take it up. So it's not supposed to notch going up it's supposed to not going down which that seems perfect not too shabby huh you know basically that's just flat on the ground the rollers the anti-scalp wheels are touching so I, you know, I'm pretty good with that everything looks Pretty even here too. 
So I think we got that hooked up correctly. The deck is mounted. Let's get the seat now. Kind of looks to me like there's only one bolt holding this on. And then you have the, the adjustment there. Safety here. I need a screwdriver to get that. I wonder if we can transfer that over to the new seat. I kind of doubt it though. Hmm. Well, check it out. Actually, there's this is the new seat. There's definitely room for this thing. Oh, that's remarkably simple. <laughs> okay. Sometimes it's that easy. All right, all right. Take a look. How nice does that seat look on top? Those foot treads too, those are not bad, huh? pleased with this so I mean I could clean this up a little bit more those tires need to be cleaned uh, the engine needs to be serviced I haven't done the oil change yet and I have one uh, decal that's coming in because I ground that one off this is sweet so you can see where it's leaking around here now this is the valve cover I didn't open yet but I'm hoping that all the oil I'm seeing is just resulting from this particular valve cover so I did uh, place an order I got two new gaskets I'm hoping this is the right one it looks like it is yeah that should be good all right let's get those installed well, that was loose curious about how much oil might spill out of this I couldn't get this thing started this morning it's 20 something degrees battery is pretty weak and wasn't having it it's been a pretty good battery besides that but it is pretty cold oh, let's see what we're working with here Looks like there's RTV on this. Oh, no, it came right out. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm going to have to clean this up. It's RTV. All right, I didn't bring my wire wheel down, so I'll go up to the shop and clean this up. I didn't film it. It's just cold, and it made a mess. And Anyway, I got the gaskets on.
Okay, the other thing that came in the mail are some decals. So I'm going to use one of these on the front, and let's get that on right now. I got it started it's much later in the day right now and uh, tinkering around with the linkages for the throttle and the choke and the governor it surges a little bit doesn't seem to have enough range from full throttle to idle I did adjust the governor when I first got this and that did help it um, so anyway just toyed around with it for a little bit it runs great I mean when you're mowing no issues so it's just when you're you know idling with no load it just surges I don't know you change the oil either way I'll do the service on this it's kind of nice that you can get to uh, the oil drain right here there's a hose that comes out good and black One thing's going to be the filter, the oil filters right there. And I was inspecting this for any leaks and I think I solved it with those valve cover gaskets. I don't see any leaks anymore. It's still pretty dirty in here but I, I cleaned it all up where it was looking like it was leaking and I don't see anything so I think we're in the clear with engine leaks. It's a tight squeeze for your view and for me trying to get the filter off. So let's see how we do here. Of course now the fuel pump's probably in your way. All right, at least it's turning. Already got the shop towels down here. Hoping that it, because this filter sideways, that most of the oil is already drained out. That does not seem to be the case, though. <laughs> it's already making a pretty good mess. Well, let's get it over and done with, right? Nine hundred and thirteen hours, November two thousand twenty-three. This thing does have kind of high hours, but I really think this is a second engine, and that doesn't mean much either because you never know how many hours the second engine had when it got put on. Could have been brand new, could have been old, <laughs> but uh, I think this machine came with a twenty-four horsepower, and this is a twenty-three horsepower. So anyway is what it is got the oil filter on uh, the spark plugs are brand new I don't know if you remember I put Sten's spark plugs on there this thing needs to go so, a new one here let's get this area cleaned up before we put a filter on though feel kind of strange doing all this to a mower when basically it's just going to get put away for the winter but I don't normally I don't normally do this I'm usually putting all this stuff on as I'm about to sell it now this one I know I keep saying I'm going to keep this one but it might just be worth too much money <laughs> and in that case I might have to sell it so we'll see how it goes Nice. 
Oil's flowing pretty slow today. That's okay by me. It's been a beautiful day outside. Saturday after Thanksgiving. Not a bad day to work on machines. I think this is as good a place as any to end this video. I could keep tinkering with this thing and I probably will until I sell it. Uh, but this has been a really fun project. I bought this thing for $500. It didn't run. It had a pretty good story. I thought I'd probably be able to get it to run. So uh, the engine, just to recap, the engine had a dead cylinder from the push rods and the rocker arms were all messed up in that valve cover. We got that sorted out. We fixed the coil we got this thing to run on two cylinders and since then we've just been restoring it so painted it up put on a new seat did a full service on it i think this thing came out great i'm thinking about keeping it but i really don't need anything this nice to mow my lawn i have plenty of tractors i don't know we'll see it's probably worth too much money to keep it <laughs> so i'll keep you updated with what happens to this thing but my name is kyle channel is called Kyle by the Creek. Thanks for viewing. Like the videos, subscribe to the channel. Appreciate all your support guys. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks.